Well, I haven't posted any videos for a while. And again, I think I'm going to change directions on the channel. I think the more technical oriented videos are uh, get better responses. And so basically those are whatever my current interest is kind of make videos about it. So right now I'm doing astrophotography and I have a telescope that I've done some photography with, but I'm trying my hand at just using a DLSR and a lens to do photography, astrophotography. And there's many channels that talk about how to do this, and I've learned a lot from them. And uh, this is my first attempt. Now, what I've done, uh, what, what you can do is, with just a camera and a tripod, you can take many short exposures of the sky, the night sky, and use a stacking program such as Deep Sky, sky Stacker to stack those photos together into, into effectively one longer exposure that eliminates noise because with low light and we're talking like six second exposures. Well, let me put it this way. So let's say I'm using a 40 millimeter lens. If you look up according to the rule, how long you can expose without getting star trails. It works out roughly to six to eight seconds. And that's still a very long time to leave the shutter open. And in high ISO, which you will need, you get noise. So that's one approach is you take a lot. I, I tried one night you know, 50 six second exposures and then you stack them together and yeah, it gets rid of the noise or does a good job. But for better quality, you want to leave that lens open longer. Use a lower ISO with the lens open longer to gather more light at a time. And certainly it, it puts less wear and tear on your camera. It, because you're taking less photos. So I looked around at, well, in order to do that, you need some kind of a star tracking camera mount. And the beautiful one that I would covet is a go-to mount that costs about $750 for the mount and a tripod. And I just couldn't spend that that's that's I didn't want to spend that kind of money so I looked into build it your own alternatives and I came across this which is the Astra V 2.1 star tracker it's basically a barn door we call them a barn door star tracker so it's basically two plates that are hinged together and there's a lead screw that that opens up the hinge at the same rate that the earth is rotating and so it undoes the earth's rotation in that and and it should do a pretty good job now this one uses a straight lead screw which i thought was preferable for for me and, it, and it, the way it gets around issues of the lead screw being straight is it has hinging on, the, on it so that basically the lead screw is kept as if it's a cord on a circle. Okay, so a, a cord of the circle making a nice triangle between the the points that the lead screw is is connected and the center makes a nice triangle an isosceles triangle so the other approach people use is a curved lead screw but that means you you buy a threaded rod and you try to bend it into an actual curve and i thought that was beyond me i i, I do 3d printing i don't do that kind of stuff so i put I 
I printed it and I bought all the parts and I put it together in a day, just a few hours. Well, the printing was was like a day, but uh, because my printer isn't exactly a fast printer. And then in an hour, whatever, I assembled it. And then fortunately, that that night, which was last night, it was fairly clear. There was some high clouds. You can see in this photo that I captured some light clouds in the in this photo. But this photo here was just to test it out. So my camera, without an external intervalometer, my camera will only do up to a 30 second exposure. So I set it for 30 seconds, 800 ISO, and did with this tracker, 10 exposures. Now, oh, the thing about these trackers is they, they are effectively like an equatorial mount, so you have to aim them at their axis at the North Star. Well, I, I bought a, a red dot sight, whatever you call it, a, a red dot spotting scope, but haven't, haven't designed the shoe for it yet to fit on the tracker. So I, what I opted to do was just use my iPhone and use the compass that is set to using true north to aim it north and the bubble level on it to aim it at, uh, to tilt it at my latitude degrees, which is about 43. And then I proceeded to take 10 30 second exposures. And as you can see, these stars are fairly round. And so this is a single frame. This is not a stacked frame. So this is a single frame. And so I want to show you the, the difference here. So view, let's say go to 200. And you can see that this is Altair. Okay, and it's fairly round. And if you if you look really close, okay, it's not quite round, but then again, like I said, that I think amounts to the aim of the tracker to the North Star. So it, it was you know, the the inclination was to the nearest degree. And so was the pointing north to the nearest degree. So I think it did an incredible job. But let's let me zoom in a little more here. You can see see all this noise. Let's let's not pay attention to the color. The color is I tried to balance it a little bit, but the but let's look at the noise. This kind of noise here is typical of a long exposure high ISO. Even 800 causes uh, on a, a Nikon D7000 causes this kind of noise. So, but I want to show you the process photo. And I've done some more, I've, I've done a better job balancing it. I use Altair and said, okay, Altair is a white star. I just claim it okay and i did a white balance uh, against altair and then i did some playing with levels but if i zoom in i'm not really seeing noise anymore i'm seeing that there's a lot of faint stars so there's a so just stacking five an effective five minute minutes worth of exposure and you know shooting like you have to the darks the biases and the flat frames did a very good job in deep sky stacker eliminating noise and now you can see more clearly the the stars are nicely round i mean for amateur photography i think this is uh, very good now that's a 40 millimeter lens and this is a cropped view, right? You, you see this view, if I bring it out to, back out to 100%, or, well, I got to bring it out to fit. 
this is the view and here's my garage over here. So I cropped it to make it look nice. But what I'm saying is I used a 40 millimeter lens and if I wanted a closer view of Altair, I would use my 18 to 200 millimeter lens. That seems a bit too heavy for the tracker and there's stuff I can do to try to uh, like some changes I can make to try to make it work. Like maybe I can make a counterbalance for, f because the, the camera that lens is heavy and the ball head that I'm using is hefty, but I wanted a hefty ball head because then it would be firm. It, you know, the camera won't slide around on its own as I found with other ball heads. So it's going to need a little more work to see if I can get it to do work with my 200 millimeter lens. So what is the problem? Well, if I, if I set up the barn door tracker level, okay, so that there's no angle for the North star, put the camera, the 200 millimeter lens on and turn on the tracker. It, it skips. It doesn't open at, a rate of 0.25 degrees a minute. It misses steps. So that is that it's too heavy. The motor I'm using, the stepper motor I'm using is, so this is the fellow's webpage for the tracker. And here's his picture. The stepper is a, is a uh, 28BYJ-48 stepper. So you, it's a very light little stepper motor, not a heavy duty stepper motor. And that's an option. An option is put just a, just put a, a heavier stepper motor in there, but I would have to redesign part of the, part of the mount. Another idea is he's using an M8 No, a T8 by 200 millimeter lead screw. Now, when you buy these, they come in various pitches. And the one that he used and the one that I also am using is 8 millimeters. So that's pretty far. I mean, each rotation of the lead screw, it moves 8 millimeters. So you could get i can easily get a four millimeter one just go on amazon the same page but select four millimeter and so it will take more turns to open to open the jaws of the barn door tracker but there would be less torque needed to do the opening because it's effectively a ramp right that's what a screw is so you know the lower the angle of the ramp the easier it is to climb it so that's one thought it's it's something that i think i'm gonna do and then you i would have to change some code so that's the story i'm i wanted to take photos of nebulas and because that would work out well with these short focal lengths even 200 is short focal length right if you're thinking about a astrophotography so with 40 millimeters that's a very wide angle field of view and it would be good for Milky Way photos, but I, you know, I live in a light polluted area, so it's not likely I'm ever going to see the Milky Way around here. But on a on an actual clear night, I might faintly see the Milky Way. On an actual clear night, I might be able to take a photo of a nebula. Now, the one that I was targeting or wishing I could do is the North America Nebula because it's fairly big and it's easy to spot because it's right there by Deneb. 
but by the time I got this all together and and I got a clear night, uh, Deneb at midnight is almost straight up, and I'm finding it difficult for me to figure out how to aim the camera straight up. It's just difficult. It's easier when there's a slight angle because then you can look through the viewfinder easily. I have a right angle viewfinder that will help, but with my eyes, I can't see the stars, especially if it's not very dark. I can't see the stars through the the optical viewfinder. And to use the live view, that's difficult when where I can see the stars if you zoom it in. That's difficult when the camera's pointing straight up because basically you got to get your head in there in between the the camera live view screen and the mount. It's like difficult. So it's hard to look straight up. So it it's like I should have had this all together more towards the beginning of July, end of June, where Deneb would have been at a reasonable angle in the middle of the night. So the next thing that is coming up, as far as uh, Nebula is concerned, is the Andromeda Galaxy. And that one at midnight is at a nice angle from from my position right now. So that if is basically a little lower and to the right than Cassiopeia or Cassiopeia, however you want to pronounce it. And so what I need is a very clear night and my 200 millimeter lens working on the mount. And then I can do some Andromeda photos. I will I will be glad to post a video about how to put together that tracker. It's a wonderful design. It's very easy to put together if you have a 3D printer. And there's some steps along the way that that I learned to be able to print it. There was some a little bit of difficulty in printing some of the parts. But that's me and my printer. It's not the design. And there is a little bit of adjustment that I had to make to some of the parts, to one of the parts, basically. And but it all it just all goes together perfectly. You know, there's it's like there's no fussing with it after you put it together. It just works. And using the I use an ESP32 processor to, or microcontroller to drive it and it keeps very good time so you're basically making a clock and the esp32 has a crystal system crystal control crystal system clock and so it, it would be very pretty accurate so i'll be glad to make a video talking about that if i get any interest i don't know if anyone's going to see this video but if you're interested in that tracker, I could do I could do more. Other than that, is I take photos, I think I will post them. I'll find somewhere to post them and I'll make videos about them. But I was particularly interested in Altair. It's like my favorite star. So as you can see. There is a bit of the Milky Milky Way that runs through this area, but all I'm seeing is, if I zoom out, is light pollution. Okay, down down at the bottom here, light pollution. Even though, yeah, I was using a cheap light pollution filter. So, anyways, have fun. If you want to try this kind of stuff, I would recommend it. It seems to be very easy. You just need a camera, a lens, and yeah, a 3D printer. Or there are people that will sell the 3D printed kits for barn door trackers. You can find that on eBay. Okay, that's it for now.